Okay, so what is today's class focused on? Today's class, the main theme is going to be focused on understanding trending environments in relationship to the Ichimoku cloud and its individual components. So trending environments, their characteristics uh, within the Ichimoku cloud. And so for those of you that are new, um, feel free to let me know uh, so I can adjust the material based on that. But one of the main and simplest methods that the Ichimoku cloud uses to verify a trend is it basically talks about price action's relationship to the Kumo. If price action is below the Kumo, then we're in a generally bearish environment. If price action is above the Kumo, then we're in a gener uh, generally bullish environment. There are other factors that would have an impact on that, that would further amplify the strength or weakness of that clarification. One of those would be the time that we are on one side of the Kumo or the other. So, and that's, and that's a tricky subject in the sense of there's so many different time frames, there's no way it would be appropriate one time would be appropriate on one time frame and then not another. So the amount of time that we are on one side of the Kumo can have an effect and actually make a statement in regards to the strength of the weakness of that trend. Obviously, the longer we're on one side of the Kumo, the better. Uh, the, long, the longer we are on, uh, you know, below it, the stronger the strength of that bear, or the stronger or the greater the strength of that bear's trend is. The longer we are above it, the greater the strength of that bull trend is. Okay, now one interesting thing is we'll actually kind of see that highlighted in here. The euro dollar has been falling for quite a long while, for those you've been following it, from 151 uh, and a quick dash down to 138 and a half. And it's only had mild corrective waves to the upside uh, before it just began another series of selling. You can see it here selling off, and we have this slightly corrective move. And look what happens. We have a brief foray above the Kumo here, very short, limited in time. And then we sell back below, and we're below it for a long period of time. And this move right here. Now, if you had to look at these two moves right here, does this move have any similarities and characteristics to this move right here? And if they are, and do have similarities, what would you say those similarities are? Um, you can talk about it in terms of how price reacted to the Kumo, or to the Tank and Kiju line, or whatever. But if y'all, I mean, y'all have been, you know, looking at charts. Many of you have been looking at charts for a while. Some of you may be new, but some of you have been here for a while. I know some of your names, you know, years now. And so with that being said, what would you think that this move has similar characteristics to this move? First of all, there's definitely some characteristics. One, the angle of the move is relatively similar. If I were to draw an angle with that would kind of define some sort of trend line here and duplicate this here, move it on over. The angle is pretty similar. Angle is important when measuring price because it tells you the strength of commitment or lack thereof in buying and selling pressure. So the angle on these are relatively similar, meaning that there's not heavy commitment. It's it's mostly corrective in nature. You know, the the market's not you know putting down heavy numbers on it. It's more of like there's some profit taking, and maybe some oversoldness in the euro dollar that's causing these moves. So nothing extravagant is really forcing them. If they were, the angle would be much sharper. But the angle is relatively flat. It's decent, but it's nothing special. It's nothing to make a, a Van Gogh out of or anything like that. Two. Other similarities. Both of them have spent a lot of time breaking through the Kumo. And these Kumos weren't exceptionally thick. I mean, this thing entered the Kumo a few hours before London. This gray line represents the London Open. And it didn't exit out till 2 p.m. California time. So you're talking, you're talking well over 14, 15 hours later, uh, to break through a one hour Kumo. That's also not convincing. Contrast that to this little move right here which started another round of selling. That took a whopping one and a half hours at best. And maybe the Kumo was half as thick. 
So if we were to double the Kumo, it should have taken maybe three or four hours. This took well over 15 hours. So um, there is a similarity in terms of how long both moves are taking to punch through the Kumo, and they're not necessarily punching through with vigor. Um, there's not much force behind it. Um, so that's that's number two. The, the third thing is is that when it broke through, instead of it kind of breathing a new fresh of air and climbing high to the upside, the pair just went sideways. And that's kind of what we're seeing here as it's starting to break through here. It's not like taking off or anything. It's, you know, it's just trading sideways now at this point here. So we're seeing some similarities here. With that being said, based on how the trending environment has related to this uh, pair in time frame before and this Kumo, there are a lot of suggestions here that this move is right here, is very similar to the move right here, and that we may be starting another round of selling sometime, sometime soon. So one of the things we look for to identify trending environments is the time above or below the Kumo, what it does when it punches through the Kumo, um, how does it respond, you know, when it punches through the Kumo, how much time it takes to punch through, angle, all of those things. Uh, really clue us into information about where the commitment is for this pair or where the line of least resistance is for this pair. All very important stuff to understand. 